Hello, welcome to episode two of Lockdown Listens. We've made it into episode two. Fucking hell. <laughs> awesome. um, so, little bit yeah. of change this week, change to format. We've, uh, due to rights reasons, Lauren Averne's been in touch. The BBC have had a word with us and said, you've got you to gotta ditch that, guys. So uh, we, we've moved away from uh, the, the item and the book, and we're going to stick with uh, six tracks that have uh, got you through lockdown or, you know, been, you know, influential on your life. Um, and then we're going for three gigs as well. Your first, your uh, most memorable and your most recent or your last gig. And so, yeah, so this week we've got a new guest, uh, Gav. What's up, guys? How's it going? Hey, Gav. <laughs> Gav Thanks for having me on. Gav is an old, very old friend of mine uh that i um got introduced to on the first day of university in brighton a very long time ago uh when i sat down next to him in class on the very first lesson of uh product design um and then we just remained friends throughout you know and i visit even when gav went traveling i went and visited him in australia um and he, he stayed at my, my dad's, who, you know, lives out in Australia. He is, yes, yeah, did. and he, he, he has been a, uh, a friend of mine for a very long time and also uh, influence on music on me, which is very important. So, um, Graham knows him a bit as well. Yeah, we've definitely, we've had a few gigs uh, together and it's definitely been that uh, link that has been the thing that sort of, you know, is, but you know got us in in you know contact with one other or you know uh, and i think there's a bit of a, a bit of a link to one of the the gigs that will come become apparent later on um we won't spoil it um but yeah we well we might as well go straight into to track one then gav um, yeah sure let's do this yeah so um thanks for having me on yeah yeah so your your sort of theme this week or for your tracks is more the the recent uh i guess situation and environment you you've had with corona obviously and so yeah that that sort of leads us nicely into to this first track and how that's been sort of you know why is that relevant in the last few months yes so um <laughs> pretty obvious one really corona uh by the minutemen um, yeah. firstly for the, the the title of the track um which I think is originally um, about Corona, the beer, rather than the, the Corona, the virus, which we all know a lot about now. And um, yeah, so picked for that reason, but also like just a pretty off the wall, pretty bonkers track really. And um, kind of, I feel like it encapsulates the, the madness of the last few months that everyone's been kind of going through in one, one way or another. Um, it's a great and, track, and, but like just, I love, like you said, the madness. I do like the track. It's very like upbeat, like pick you up, like yeah, great, like real, yeah. And it has some some links as well, right? Yeah. So um, most people know it is. Uh, well, I kind of, you know, actually only discovered fairly recently that it's the uh, they are the artist of the track of the the main theme tune of uh, of MTV. Is it MTV? Um, Jackass, yeah. Everyone, know, most people know Jackass, right? Yeah, and it's so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. yeah, it's everything. Yeah, Bam Majera. It's pretty obvious why Jackass picked it for uh, for their title, uh, you know, um, track. It definitely so, has that just, sort of jankiness to do with it. It just is very associated. I, as soon yeah. as you hear the beginning of that track, you almost, I go, my head goes straight to the many Me hours. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about yeah. we man yeah. yeah yeah so just um yeah just just a bonkers track that kind of yeah just sort of sets the tone for the the rest of the uh the tracks so yeah kind of, they're they're a bit of a quick quick spark band weren't they they kind of post punk yeah. 85 went for apparently through lots of different versions of post punk funk soul punk jazz folk um but like short spark band finished in 85 Death, the unfortunate death of the lead singer. So, yeah, yeah, yeah great I, song. I'd, I'd heard of the, the the name Minutemen, the band, but not really ever given them a good listen. And 
for obviously when I heard this tune, it's instantly recognizable and probably to a, a lot of people uh, sort of similar age to us, I'd say that, you know, instantly recognize that, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, hilarious. And unfortunately <laughs> now, well, more unfortunately for, for the beer, I think the Corona, yeah. <laughs> how they, how they work out their marketing plan going forward <laughs> would be quite interesting. So yeah, just embrace, it. just embrace it. Go for it. Like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 definitely. What you, do, what you need to get yourself through the pandemic, the Corona bit. A couple of bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> we've all had that moment. I think definitely. Um, so <laughs> moving into to, to track two, and it's I, I think um, obviously off the back of um, sort of feelings of how we've been doing in in lockdown and music has played a massive part for me in the last sort of three months, and I think this song has you know done one of those tracks for you as well gab has been pretty pretty yeah yeah for sure i I couldn't have like a selection of tracks without picking an interpol track and um turn on the bright lights being you know that debut that you know is a a favorite for a lot of people that are into indie music and alternative music in general um stella was a diver and she was always down Um, for for some reason that like that track just stands out for me it's a really kind of Moody, gritty, just spells New York to me, you know. Um, yeah, I, 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 I already knew that you were on this track. I, I yeah, actually, I, I remember sitting there thinking, like, what would that pick? And 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 then like, yeah, this has been a favourite of yours since the days of uni. And so definitely, I think the you know Carlos's bass line really is just like a standout part of the track and. Um, I think, you know, with a lot of reflecting that's been going on over lockdown and like you have those days when you just kind of, just really kind of, mm, just not really knowing how things are going to go, right? And it's, uh, you know, it's not well, that I find it like a downer of a track, it's actually very uplifting, but at the same time, it's like, you know, shit, where's the, where, where, where are we going, you know? It's just, uh, yeah, Interpol, what can I say? Yeah, and, and uh, the, the link for us as well, I think it's one of the gigs we've, uh, we've been to. Uh, right. Yeah. So that was, there was their big Ali Pali. Yes. How many yeah. years was that? It was uh, 15 years of Turn on the Bright Lights. So they played the in, yeah, entirety of the album. Like, yeah. what, a, what a show. Yeah, amazing. Front, front to back, wasn't it? It was like the entire album in line. And then back We've added extras from Antics at the yeah. end. Sort of, yeah. yeah, amazing. Like, we had a bit of debate as well over what the meaning of the title could have meant. So, yeah, yeah. It was a driver and always down. To help us yeah. out. Um, yeah, the reason I always used to think of is that she was a she was a deep sea diver, but she was always in a mood. So right, yeah, yeah. very innocent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it kind of conjures up the idea of Wes Anderson films for some reason as well. <laughs> <laughs> the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, and that you know. Yeah, I get I get the feeling a lot of uh, a lot of um, Paul Banks' lyrics from earlier in the whole stuff are uh, revolve around ex girlfriends and uh, people that you might have been seeing. So I'm sure it maybe has uh, something to do with a lady in his life or who is no longer in his life. I don't know, but yeah. Okay, cool. So on to number three, and we're we're sort of flipping it. To yeah, one eighty, I guess, uh, into a, a song. Um, uh, ain't ain't no half stepping by Big Daddy Kane. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Also, like big officially first hip hop track, I believe. Big big hip hop fan, uh, especially the the old school, you know, eighties nineties. I think it's cited as like one of the top fifty um, hip hop tracks of all time, but. Um, just one of those tracks that you know whatever mood you're in if you need to pick me up and uh you just want to just feel good it's uh, it's one of those that will like definitely do that for you um yeah got a great great old school beat like the the soul sample at the beginning just like is, is amazing um and it just remind yeah it just just comes up imagery of like a, a, a block fight in the bronx where everyone's just like getting down having a good time and carefree you know which is like you know what you might need even if it's in your own only in your own front room at yeah. the moment you know <laughs> hopefully there'll be some of those moments uh back soon so yeah that right. I, I think that idea of being 
gigs, festivals, big parties, and uh, looking forward to some of those again. It's been something that's sort of been like really, yeah, that, that idea I've been holding on to a little bit. So, yeah, that idea of being a big sort of block party style environment sounds wicked right now. Definitely. Yeah, man. definitely. Yeah, Plastic people are missing that. Hip hop variety as well. Classic. Um, exactly. I mean, and I said earlier about influencing me musically. This is this is the genre that um, I would probably say that my influence from is mainly from Gavin because I don't have many other people who are as into hip hop as as the the Davies family in general. Right, you, you know my little brother Ryan is like the the originator with the hip hop. So, um, but yeah, we're all into it, and also like it, 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 there was a, a bit of a link here with, with Wu Tang, which you know everyone's familiar with Wu Tang Clan. But they they RZA did a did a set on Six Music, and they had there's a few of the Wu Tang there, and they did a takeover, and like they dropped this track halfway through, and I was just like, yes, like we're all listening to it like in different locations. Like, yeah, that, that tune, you know, it's amazing. You, I know you're a big fan of Wu Tang, because Damo. Your middle, your middle brother did a uh, Wu Tang Clan uh, um, Glastonbury for uh, uh, what's it called? Hip hop uh, karaoke. Yeah, so that's ain't uh, nothing yeah. to fuck with. Ain't yeah, that, to fuck that was impressive. Yeah, props. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, moving moving on to to talking about gigs now. Uh, nice segue there. Um, so yeah, run us through. So you've got you've got three gigs to hear us about. That's uh, your your first one, your most memorable, gig, your most recent. Yeah. So um, I actually happen to have ticket stubs. Uh, well, stub and a wristband for two of those. First gig. Boom. Silver chair. Excellent. At Shepherd's Bush Empire, twelfth uh, of June, two thousand three. Awesome. Um, I mean, mind-blowing first gig to go to, like, yeah, An amazing live band. I didn't know a whole lot about them, but an Aussie friend of mine knew they were in town, he was here, obviously, and we got the tickets on eBay, and he's like, you're gonna be blown away by this, and it was, yeah, it was pretty special. Um, big Anthony oh, and Stronghold yeah. in Shebu, so there was a lot of Aussies and Kiwis in the house, um, and it was just, like, the, the crowd was really cautious, you know, standing one minute on the floor the next, and you were just, like, moving around the place, and it was <laughs> amazing. Such a talent, Daniel Johns. How old were you when you when you went? How old? When was it? In nine, was like 2000, 2003. So like my yeah, my gig, gigging career is like started pretty late. I think I was probably about eighteen at the time. But to be honest, yeah. it blows. I'm not going to reveal. What, I'm not going to blow. I'm not going to. That's not that bad. Like because I'm not going to tell what my first gig was. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but we we should we should wait until we reveal our first gigs at a later episode. But yeah, I can say this that your gig, your first gig, destroys mine out of the water. So I would, I would if I had the sense to go to like decent gigs like when I was old enough. Yeah, so. Yeah, it was purely based but, uh, off of uh, my my friend's recommendation, and I yeah you know, put, put my trust in that, and uh, he, he delivered. Well. Yeah, nice, nice. yeah. Um, good, great band, mate. I love. You know, we said earlier, like it's uh, um, freak. What 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 song? Uh, and yeah, you you know, uh, year was it anthem of the year two thousand? Still great riff in that song. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, they were touring uh, Diorama on this tour, which is like a. a the anthemic album it's like it's just full of huge tracks like yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's their stadium sort of track you know a stadium album but it's yeah amazing amazing music great um okay. best gig car choice i've got the wristband da, 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 da. the white stripes um Rivoli oh. ballroom in crofton park uh same date as my first gig random 12th of june 2007 <laughs> Um, I mean, the White Stripes, no longer, you know, I, arguably, I think probably their last um, club date before they split yeah. up, Meg, Meg's anxiety issues, um, and then they were no longer after that, and they did a, a, a one show in Hyde Park the day after, and they were here to do a big Hyde Park show. That gig was announced last minute, we like, like we went and got the wristbands, we had to like, travel into London to get them, and then the gig was the next day. Um, Rivoli Ballroom, if you don't know, in Crofton Park in South London. 
is like one of the, I mean, the only remaining like, 1950s style ballroom. Very distinctive, architecturally. It's decked out as the white stripes would have, you know, had decked out. They designed it, you know, red velvet everywhere. It was just, you know, the, the, the scene was, was set for an amazing show uh, in such a really small venue, like 400 capacity. We were crushed, it was hot, everyone was wearing red, white, and black. <laughs> and um, I happened to be glued to anchor. Little did I know he'd become a really good friend and friend of you guys as well. Um, fellow music yep. lover and uh, we've been with friends ever since then so yeah just pouring water over ourselves just to try and survive <laughs> the show that the security were handing out um, and, yeah, really, really memorable I mean, show yeah I mean uh, incredible band as well right like just rock, two of them rocking the stage like no other really and 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 um, Ang that kind of leads to the link of uh, Anchor met you Graham right um, so you both went to a Wild Beast gig through the group, gig group. Yeah, I guess similar, to, yeah, to, to Gap. Uh, my, you know, how I met Gap through gigs and gigging and uh, Anchor, who, um, yeah, I'd never met, is a mutual friend um, of these guys, of you guys. And uh, yeah, ne never met the guy. Both had a ticket to see Wild Beasts in uh, Rough Trade. It was either Wild Beasts or uh, Glass Animals. My memory is terrible. But uh, it was two bands in, a, in an in-store in Rough Trade East, which I always love those because you essentially, you buy the album, uh, for the price of the album, you get the like the vinyl and then you get a really cool intimate little gig in the, in the, in the shop, the back of the store. And so I've been to a few and they're really wicked. So yeah, so I met Anchor as well through at a gig for the first time. Yeah. Great. Cool. Cool. So um, last time. gig now, yeah? Yes. Last gig. Uh, last gig was um, was a band called Twen, um, Boston-based band, and that was kind of like a. I think I heard a track of theirs on Six Music. And I was like, yeah, these guys are gonna be worth seeing. And then uh, having the pleasure of living in London and knowing that a band's probably gonna be stopping through, just checked out when they were playing next, and they happened to be yeah doing a show at Shackle Arms that week or the week after. So yeah, grabbed some cheap tickets, went along. Really good show. Um, and little did I know, like, you know, a month and a bit later, the, there will be no gigs. So, yeah, kind of kind of glad I snuck one in there. And um, yeah. just before, before everything right. got shut down, you know. Completely. You are really ready for the, the closest gig to lockdown. We okay. Try the closest one. But currently, you're a month and a half in. All right. You're not fun. <laughs> I, I think it can be beaten. We'll see. Yeah. Cool. All right. I'll sit. I'll be in the hot seat for now. Yeah. And then, all right. So back to um, now. Moving back to, to tracks. Uh, your final hmm. tracks that, that kept you going in lockdown. Um, and this one is, I think, all a well, a huge fan to, to many, but you know, to us three, definitely. Uh, I was reliving their 1997 Glasgow set the other night. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's talk show host by Radiohead. Yeah, um, still beggars belief that it's a B side to um, Street Spirit Fade Out. Probably more well known for being on the Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. Uh, the scene when Benvolio goes to to find Romeo and he's on on his own on the beach, just mulling over things that's going on in his head. Which I think uh, it's, it's like the, that's the lockdown link for me, you know, Romeo and Juliet. That film uh, in, in, in that story in general has a lot of uh, kind of like tones of isolation and separation and just like you know all kinds of shit going wrong. Um, and, and, and the track itself is just like you know it's it's, it's just got that kind of just that mood to it that lends itself to a to sort of quite sort of dark and yeah, no, definitely. Have you have you watched the film during lockdown? Or is it, is yeah, it, no, you know, I actually haven't. No, it's been a while because I've seen it so many times and I don't like to like I don't like to kill it, you know. Um, yeah, it, no, but it's a stunning film. Best, yeah. best of those films, like um, and just like an amazing interpretation of Shakespeare. It's it's bonkers when you actually think about that and then actually watch it. It's like yeah, incredible. But yeah, I mean, it's, it is like the, that trap that I was, that kind of is like morphing into OK Computer, which is like the, you know, Radiohead's uh, 
like kind of point of like start point really then becoming the great band that they are today this like prolific like career of kind of you know morph of music of electronic and, and, and indie and, and art rock and whatever they are but yeah great totally yeah i think that the way that like phil phil selway's drums in this are pretty technical as well like they're it's just yeah it's, it's going towards their their later material isn't it it's like the the transition between early radiohead and, and what we know them to be now so. exactly yeah. exactly that yeah that technicality and the tech the kind of just even the format of the whole song and how it's put together with the drums and then the guitar and the bass and and how it just yeah it's, yeah it's amazing Totally, totally. And awesome. then, I was going to say, ne next one, um, we've got, yeah. well, for me, what's been really important is having some big, uh, energised rock uh, to keep me going in slightly difficult times being on my own. <laughs> and certainly fits into that category, although I haven't actually listened to this track or really this band too much. Uh, I just probably should have done. But it's uh, pinned by yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and the album this is off of Fever to Tell. I mean, just like I mean, for our for you know the the when like the, all the new indie bands took off in the early noughties, This was this is one of those albums that you're like always going to be going back to and, and just remembering yeah. good times and really scuzzy toilet venues, just getting off your face, like dancing all night to amazing indie. Um, yeah. It's like a classic Hab Tab tune where me and Gav used to go to Brighton Uni every Thursday night. Uh, one pound entry, cheap snake bites, and we ran the floor, for the rafters and didn't do music. Yeah, it was uh, quite a uh, turbulent but fun time. So, yeah, it's a classic thing. I just think, yeah, that, 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 you know, Carano's vocals, raspy, like, Sassy Nick's in his like intro on the guitar, the riff is like instantly recognizable and it just like it never fails to make me want to bounce off the wall, just get on the fence and go nuts, you know, like just a good pick me up track all round. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, really essential thing in the last few months definitely. So it's amazing. Yeah, we all need days. I realised how important music was to me, I think, in the last few months. I think I you know, I always love it and it's one of my you know, my biggest hobby or my biggest interest but i think certainly having a time on my own sitting at home and, and having certain songs come on and really pick me up and take me out of the mood and put me into a better place or give me some energy because you know i, I usually probably need uh, i'm quite an extrovert so i normally try and get that off others but not having other people around me to get energy from is the thing go to, to to music like i've done is so yeah this this you know having this kind of track is like yeah it's Awesome. The perfect accompaniment to that as well, definitely. I mean, like having the whole of like just Glastonbury to watch during lockdown. Mm -hmm. It's a shame actually that they didn't put the yeah yeah yeahs on there, Gav, because you said yeah. you were. Uh, I definitely saw... see, I've seen. Yeah, I think they played the other stage quite early on uh, on one of the days at uh, one of the Glastonbury's that I attended. Yeah, um, and we saw them at the Kentish Town Forum as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. We both. Yeah, we both... Mark was with us, wasn't he? Yeah, sure. my brother, yeah. Uh, another bearded fellow, who uh, um, I'm sure maybe one day may visit this podcast, hopefully. Yeah, no, um, no. Let's get him on, <laughs> get him on. <laughs> okay, moving cool. into your, your final track. Um, this is quite a curious one because it's, uh, it's uh, a cover or reimagining, really, you'd call it, rather than a cover off an album of covers, uh, yeah. reimaginings. And it's by uh, Dirty Projector and it's... Um, uh, a track called Rise Above. Yeah, so I mean, Dirty Projectors and their 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 front man and pretty much the the, the man who is the band, Dave Longstreth, um, did uh, a reimagining, reinterpretation rather of um, Black Flag's 1981 album, Damage, which is you know we know Black Flag are a vital punk band. Yeah, raspy angry henry Rollins, just just hard hitting shit right and so for a band you know apparently dave longstreth decided to cover this album uh 
and having not heard it in 15 years. So lyrically, it's like word for word, but the music, uh, two ends of the spectrum, right? So it's a yeah. really melodic and like real lovely sounding, beautiful bass, just really amazingly composed, um, but with the same lyrical content. And um, it's it's uh, it's a it's a protest song, essentially. And um, I think with everything that's going on in recent times, um, you know, governments overstepping the mark, have they made the right decisions, have they not? You know, people's rights have been uh, abused quite a bit. Um, yeah. Stuff that's going yeah. on with the race issue right now. It's just, you know, it, it's been a really heavy time for, for a lot of people. And um, I think it's just, yeah, for me, this track, I've always loved this track and um, Deck Projectors are an amazing band. Dave and I have seen them live and they, they, they really are one of the best live bands you can see. Um, yeah, the, the vocals, you can hear it in this song, the way that they sort of juxtaposition vocals with uh, like different members of bands, so like female to um, his, the lead singer's band, and like vocals is incredible. Like it makes, like, like, you have to, I think you have to have real skill to kind of understand how that, that fits together. Because like, and, and that's quite similar in a lot of their stuff. They're like one of the only bands to have ever done an album with York. So, and you can like, she's such a skilled vocalist. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, she did an album, is it Mount Win Witten what is it said? Wittenberg Orca? Wh yeah, Mount Wittenberg Orca, yeah. I mean, I, all their material was definitely worth listening to. But, um, yeah, just yeah. chose this track because of just how how apt it is for the time, and um, it's a it's a protest song for, for for what's going on right now, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah. Great. Nice Great tune. That's those are my selection, boys. Great, Gav. Excellent. Gavin. You Excellent. For your yeah, for coming on, lockdown listen. Thank you. Yeah. Number Thank two. you yeah. so much. Thank you and, very much. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Hope Cheers. you enjoyed putting this together, and we will obviously distribute a playlist on Spotify uh, as the, as a to go uh, to accompany this this uh, this little recording um, but you know there we go yes episode Thanks, two. cheers Dave yeah. thank you episode two in the bag